hello i welcome you all so here i have the one question this question is based on eccentrically loaded pivoted joint okay so here there may be number of rivets which are been arranged and the load which will be applied at a certain distance from this the line of the rivets so that we call as eccentrically loaded riveted joint so in this question it say a bracket here where two plates are been riveted and it is uh, supported by means of these four rivets okay with of a uh, same size okay all rivets are with of same size so you need to find the uh, diameter okay so you need to find the diameter of this rivet because we it's all same so you have to calculate the diameter for uh, one rivet okay and uh, the maximum shear stress uh, is in the material that rivet material that is given in the question as 100 newton per millimeter square this is a maximum stress that we have to take it now here the load uh, where the load is applied at the ends that is given as 60 kilo newton okay the load is given 60 and from here the center of the rivets okay the center of the rivets to the load this distance is given as 200 millimeter that we call as eccentricity okay so now here in this quotient the distance uh, from one rivet to the another rivet that is also given as 50 millimeter each distance is 50 from one rivet to the another rivet from here to here again it's 50 and 50 from here to here okay so whatever this uh, rivets are given in any order whether it's arranged in a symmetrically or non-symmetrically or any system okay however it is arranged but you have to calculate the cg for the system of rivets cg means what center of gravity okay if you take this as separately here i will explain you for example here there is a rivet one there is a rivet two rivet three and this is the rivet four right four rivets are in a straight line now let us say this is one this is two three and four and distance also which is mentioned here already as you can see this is 50 and this is also 50 from here to here and from here to here it's 50 okay this distance are given now how you can calculate the center of gravity for this so center of gravity it is anyhow it is a symmetry about the x-axis okay this all are arranged in a straight line so it is a symmetry about x-axis so your cg may be here okay where at the midpoint of this so here means uh, 50 plus half of this 25 it means 50 plus 25 75 so from here to here cg the distance will be 75 millimeter cg is located here that is called g set of gravity okay now you have to calculate the length of each rivet from center of the rivet to the cg okay center of rivet to the cg that you have to calculate for example if i say l1 l1 is the distance from the center of rivet to the cg how much it will be it will be 75 check so here from here to here it's 50 plus from here to here 25 similarly we have to calculate for l2 l2 is from the center of the rivet 2 to the cg that is 25 now for l3 again it's 25 from here to here and for l4 from the center of cg to this again it's 75 only it means l1 is equal to l4 l2 is equal to l3 that is the 
thing you have to calculate now after this calculation you have to go for uh, calculating the primary and secondary node because when there is a case of eccentrically riveted joint okay so uh, uh, it may be subjected to or resultant stress due to the combined effect of primary shear load and uh, secondary shear load for the primary shear load that will be acting parallel to this load for example the load is applying here so for the rivet one the primary load will be parallel to the load applied it means for example if you say fp is the primary load for one it will be parallel to this applied load and similarly for two f p2 okay and whereas in case of secondary load that will be the perpendicular to the this direct load it means if you say fs1 that will be perpendicular to this applied load okay and uh, these two direct shear load and uh, primary shear load both are at an angle of 90 degree so theta will be 90 degree here okay that you have to consider now for example if you want to know what is a uh, primary load for the fp1 so for rivet 1 what will be the primary load so in general uh, the primary load will be the load applied divided by number of rivets okay so primary load uh, it will be f f is given as 60 kilo newton 10 power of 3 by 4 4 is the number of rivets so 60 by 4 it is 15 15 again kilo newton okay so fp1 is 15 similarly fp2 also same fp3 also same and f p4 also same so because of the direct load okay both all are applying same direction that's why it is same so we'll say f p directly okay instead of saying 1 and 2 so this f p is equal to 15 kilometers this is the what is called it is the primary shear load now you have to calculate the secondary shear load that is acting perpendicular to the line of joining of the center of gravity of the riveting group okay that you have to check now so secondary loads will be taken as f s okay second load for rivet 1 fs1 for rivet 2 fs2 for rivet 3 fs3 and fs4 for uh, these are the what are the secondary shear force loads induced in the corresponding rivet okay so uh, we know that where fs1 f s1 by l1 okay similarly f s2 by l2 now write f s3 by l3 f s4 by l4 okay that's the formula so now let us calculate what is f s2 f s2 here this one where f s2 is equal to f s1 into l2 l2 by l1 similarly fs3 same f for fs3 and this two relation you have to consider now again fs1 l3 by l1 for fs4 fs1 into l4 by l1 okay so if any other rivets are there similarly you have to do for the all the rivets like this so okay and also we know that the turning moment due to the applied loop that is where 
f e f into e is equal to f s one by l one again l one square plus l two square plus l three square plus l four square. Okay, so this is f s one. First, we'll calculate what is f s one so that we can substitute. Uh, here to calculate the fs2 fs3 fs4 okay so f f is the load how much load is given as 60 and eccentricity is 200 and fs1 will have to calculate l1 is the length that is we got as 75 so l1 is again 75 uh, so instead of l1 let us write 75 square l2 will be 25 square L3 again 25 square, L4 is 75 square. Okay. So after this calculation, we are getting FS1. So FS1 is obtained uh, as 72 kilonewton. Okay. And we'll go for calculating FS2. FS2. FS2 is equal to uh, that is FS1. That is as 72 into L2. What is the formula here? We have made it for FS2, FS1, L2, L1. L2, L2 value is 25 by L1 is 75. So we got as 25 kilonewton here. Now FS3 as 72 again L3, L3 is again 25 by 75 is equal to again. Uh, we got 72 so yeah here some there is a yeah, it will be 24 here i written as 25 but it is 24 24 kilonewton one is 75 uh, one is 72 another is 24 and this will be again same 24 kilonewton now we'll calculate for fs4 fs4 is again 72 and l4 is 75 by 75 so this two will get cancel so we got again 72 kilometer right so fs1 and fs4 is the maximum load we can observe at rivet 1 and rivet 4 okay now coming to the resultant shear force okay right turn resultant shear load acting at the rivets so we observe that maximum load at 4 and 1 so we can say f is equal to of direct load square plus secondary load that is f f s1 or f s4 you can take plus 2 f p into f s1 into cos theta theta is the angle between direct load and second load that is 90 degree okay so this resultant force let us say fr so from here if you substitute as fp we got as 15 square that is the direct load and uh, fs1 that is 72 plus 2 again 15 into 72 into cos 90 degree make this in the Valuation so we got again 74 kilo newton as the resultant shear load. Now you have to substitute this resultant shear load in the equated where F R1 is equal to pi by 4 d square into tau 74. Is equal to pi by 4 into d square into tau is given as 100 that is the stress in the material so finally you have to obtain what is d 
okay so, so let us say 74 kilo right so 10 power of 3 that you have to consider because d you have to calculate in millimeter so got as 31 millimeter is the diameter of the rivet okay so you can make the rounded value as 30 or 32 anything highest rounded value you can consider so thank you for watching have a good day